they enjoyed living. When they traveled together, that's what just amazed me, where they went to Egypt and, and to Peru and in Paris. And... Yeah, well, the, the anniversary of Tom's accident was approaching, and I, I felt like I needed to, to do something to honor him and you know, also try to prevent what happened to me from happening to someone else. And so I, I over the, the course of the year after he passed away, I recorded video diaries as it was kind of one of like the only things that I could do that um, like actually made me feel better. It was kind of like therapeutic. And uh, yeah, so I you know made the, the YouTube video and I released it on May 7th, 2012. Essentially, they were living the American dream. There was an aura about them that just was something special. I think the phrase his dad used was, he was going to come out to California and got Literally up. ripped the door off Please the Please showed hinges. up in the house. They beat up their son because he his was dad gay. pulled a shotgun on him. Well, I actually met Shane and Tom, the subject of this documentary, Bridegroom, at a wedding for a gay couple, mutual friends of ours, a few years ago, and a few years before Tom died. And they sat at my table that night, and um, I created a television show called Designing Women, and being uh, good gay young men, they were well aware of Designing Women, and Tom especially was a fan. And I was just so charmed by them and their relationship. It was so evident that this was, that they really had a connection and uh, they were just adorable. And I even said to my husband on the way home, you know, I hope they really uh, will get married someday because they just seem so happy and so deeply in love. And then when I heard that Tom died, I was very upset because they had stayed with me. Um, then I saw Shane's YouTube video and I started to feel really angry about that. Um, just the way that Shane had been treated and disregarded by Tom's family. A man fell to his death from a four-story apartment building in Los Angeles. They, they won't let me in to see him. And I was like, Mom, like he died. Oh my God, Shane. I, I said, seriously, who dies like that? A moment I want to ever go through again. His uncle and his father had planned an attack. Are they going to shoot him? Are they going to kill my son? The love of my life, the person I was with for almost six years, and I'm not allowed to attend his funeral. I saved him a program because he's the love of Tom's life. Unfortunately, he wasn't mentioned in it. It's not a gay thing. It's not a straight thing. It's a human thing. The support that I received from people from literally all over the world like, there's so many wonderful messages that, you know, it, it made me feel really happy that I posted. Um, but at the same time, there was thousands of messages I received from people who have gone through something similar as me or, you know, worse. Like, there are people that were, you know, with their partner for 18 years and their partner passed away and their, their partner's family took their body away and they still, to this day, don't even know where he's buried. The, and so it's just such tragic, heartbreaking stories. And, um, you know, so when she called me and we met, I just really felt, you know, her passion. And we just had this, like, connection. And um, so I was just honored that she wanted to be the one to tell the story. I was sure that his mom knew that he was gay. But she immediately called his dad to, to come home from work because of this breaking news. His dad said a lot of hateful things towards him and and blamed Shane for making him gay. It's Shane's fault, Shane turned you gay. Um, being in LA turned you gay. All of your accomplishments so far being nothing now. They said, change your mind, you have to change your mind. And Tom said that he just kept saying no. Like, I, you know, I can't change my mind. It's not a, a mind change thing. And of course we reached out to them to be in the documentary and they didn't respond. And so I think you know, they are remaining silent, but there are family members of his who wanted to be a part of the film, and they wanted, you know, to be at the premiere at Tribeca, and they support what we're doing, but they fear that if they show their support, or if anyone finds out about it, that they'll lose their family, and, you know, so I want to be respectful of that, and 
so I don't I don't know um, if they know what's happening. But I think but. Tom would would love the way that Shane has handled all of this because Shane has continued throughout their mistreatment to treat them with respect, and he is and that's part of what's in the film. You know that Shane never retaliated. He wasn't even mentioned in the program at the funeral, and he was the love of Tom's life. Um, so I think he would be very proud of the uh, peaceful and respectful way Shane has gone about representing their relationship. He told me that his dad pulled a shotgun on him, and at that point, I, I was really scared. So while Tom and I were on the phone, his dad, Norman, literally ripped the door off the hinges and his mom got on the phone and she said to me, I don't know what you did to our son, but we're gonna come to LA, and we're gonna find you. I think the phrase his dad used was, he was gonna come out to California and gut him. It was just an awful situation and Tom, you know, got out of there as soon as he could and flew back to California.